Expo Bikini. I'm uh, here in the last part of um, the last summer moon, Awakatsuki Sum. Just checking what day it is. September 28th, 2013. It's a Saturday. Uh, but the big, the big thing is we're at the end of the deer moon. Um, so we're going to be shifting into the winter moons pretty pretty quick here and it has been cold uh, it's, it's stayed cold since my last visit my last visit was was uh, just about a week ago and maybe a little bit over a week ago we had a cold shot about at the at the uh, um, full moon we had a good cold shot in a storm uh, almost turned almost turned into snow uh, some of it did a little closer to the mountains, but in any case, it's been cold since. Snakes are back at their hibernacula. Um, and I'm going to check around today and see if there's any turtles out and just see what's going on here um, right now, this week, this day, uh, out at the pond. So I'll videotape it. I'm feeling a little naked today. All I brought was this video camera um, and my flashlight and a bottle of water. Normally, I have my whole uh, backpack and everything um, with my camera lenses and all that but today I just I just wanted to travel light um, so hopefully I'm not going to miss out any good opportunities for macro pictures and stuff because I didn't didn't pack my camera but um, we will at least take video see what's going on today yeah, you can see some of the colors are starting to change out here this was already starting the last time I was here, it's just more pronounced this time, but out here on the wet meadows you see this golden color. That's all the Indian hemp that uh, Inuksop it's in Blackfoot it's called. And the forest, the forest is starting to turn a little more golden than it was before. So, pretty quick here, we're going to lose the green that we had the last time I was out a week ago or so. It was still very much green. It's still a lot of green even now, but it's not going to be for long. Yeah, There's not too many flowers remaining this time of year, and um, they won't be here for long. I think these are the, the hairy golden aster, just a little... A little uh, aster um, just being visited at the moment by a drone fly, a bee mimic. But yeah, uh, so not many of these blooms still around. This few here, but most of them out here look like this. They've already been gone to seed. And I notice here next to these ones we have a little, little uh, collection here of seeds. Uh, where I think what's happening is that a mouse is going, gathering the uh, the heads of the golden aster, uh, and and sitting here collecting them, eating the seeds um, in the grass here. That's what I think is a mouse or a vole, something to that effect, um, eating these eating these seeds. So that's something I hadn't noticed before. I never noticed uh, any of the rodents to gather the the seed heads of these golden aster plants, but it makes sense. It's a good food right now for them. Yeah, here I see the same thing happening again. We got another, another few still flowering golden asters in a patch of them, but I can see there are again these kind of like these uh, these feeding stations where some critter has been. Um, eating these seeds, some rodent. So, it's definitely uh, definitely a part of the rodent phen phenology of this moon. Yeah, this is the area in here in the, in the bulrush section, North Pond, where if there's going to be turtles out, we see them basking on these logs. Um, I'm 
these old beams from the boardwalk that used to be here. And there is nobody basking today on the logs. And so um, looks like the turtles have gone under for the winter. Which is not surprising because as I said the snakes are already gone under the hibernacula. And usually the rattlesnakes and the um, turtles uh, pretty much follow the same schedule. Garter snakes seem to be able to tolerate a little bit more cold, but uh, not too much. You can see um, here there's a stem of bulrush that's been nicely clipped off there. And just a little bit over here on this log, uh, there you have the stem and it's been gnawed on. Um, my suspicion is that this is a uh, muskrat doing this because um, typically the muskrats like to pull their stuff that they're eating out um, onto these logs or onto a, some kind of like flotilla sometimes. Here's another, you can see more evidence of somebody eating over here, another little feeding station, another piece of bulrush stem. So the uh, it's one of the things that the muskrat is eating this time of year instead of typically like I see muskrat eating a lot of milfoil which is um, this plant that is um, under the water here with the many many little tiny leaves that's all milfoil um, that's what they typically like to eat uh, for a lot of the summer um, but they also they'll pull up different kind of uh, sedges and and uh, aquatic plants and grass and this and that and uh, munch away. Maybe we'll get a look at a muskrat today um, but we'll see. In any case, no turtles so that uh, is that confirmation. Yeah, I ended up uh, at that turtle area I ended up running into a guy it's the total stranger and he wanted me to sit and talk to him for a while so I was kind of busy doing that and I killed a bunch of time where I could have been out here learning something but it's okay um, got to teach him a few things about what's going on out these ways so um, here I'm on the beaver lodge and I just thought I'd come out here and check out what their uh, winter food cache is looking like and this is uh, what they've got going it's mostly um, bulrush stems which is typical of this beaver family uh, they seem to really prefer the bulrush stems for their winter rather than uh, shelling away a bunch of willow um, <clears throat> I don't know why that is but um, that's the way it is so lots of bulrush stems um, I do see some other things in here like it looks like we got a little bit of little bit of buck brush for some variety yeah some buck brush in there and out this way what is this here might be might even be some hemp in there typically these guys get cattails, bulrushes, roses, uh, even once in a while some bullberries in here and uh, yeah but for the most part I mean it looks pretty much like it usually does. Usually they have a lot of bullrush and that's what's going on here. Um, they always got this little, little uh, mound out here they pushed up to make this pool here their lodge and fill it with food. Um, so yeah, that's that's what's going on with the beavers. And their lodge is just as huge as ever. Um, this family's always had a big lodge, but now it's just just massive. They've been piling more and more on here. Piling it on, piling it on. 
so, but I think they have a pretty big family at this point. Oh, yeah, so that's what's going on with the beavers. Yeah, we've got, looks like a kingfisher still hanging out here. Oh, you can hear him, he's moving south. Yeah, so there's at least one kingfisher still around. Um, I also saw some some uh, black-capped chickadees, nipomakiks, uh, <coughs> scouring around in the wet meadows in the reeds. Um, they'll be here all winter, of course. And uh, this one kingfisher might be too. It's not. Um, it's not totally uncommon here to have a male fit kingfisher uh, stick out the winter on the wet meadows here, or in the, uh, the pond. Um, especially the last couple of years when we've had lots of open water. And what else is going on? We'll have to find out. Out here at the wide south pool. Just like with my last visit, still got lots of mallards out here. There. Sticking pretty close to the islands. Normally, this time of year, um, start seeing the widgeons coming through on their migration. But I haven't seen the widgeons yet, and I haven't heard them. So I don't know if I just missed them passing through or if they haven't come yet. Just gonna peek over here, see if there's any. Uh, Shorebirds. Lower area. Um, usually the water's a lot lower than it is here this year, so. But normally, around this time, I'd see some uh, out here, there'd be some lesser yellow legs, maybe some other kind of shorebirds. Not today. I'm still seeing a few dragonflies and there's grasshoppers. But other than that, the insect population has really dropped significantly. I'm gonna go check out the uh, owl wood and see if I can find any owls there today. A dragonfly now. He's got a friend here too. There's his buddy. This might be cherry faced meadow hawks. I'm not sure. My dragonfly ID is not up to par. The cherry faced meadow hawk. Variegated. It's called variegated meadow hawk. It's several different color. Okay, here's something kind of curious and mysterious. Got a whole bunch of looks like calcium type of bird poop splatter stuff. Um, it goes, it looks like it's splattering in this direction across the trail and into 
some of the uh, brush in here. And I don't really know what it is. Um, what would be causing that to occur just here in particular when um, there's nothing above you know there's no perches that a bird would be at above nearest is this tree over here which is quite a distance away um, why would something somebody regularly fly right through here and poop it's uh, and it's obviously a you know a splatter so they're on the move when they do it it's, uh, it's curious all right I just come across a male ringneck pheasant and he flew over this way so I'm gonna see if I can track back over here and maybe get some footage of him he may be the uh, pooping culprit for all that I know here is the poop trail that I was just showing and Mr. Pheasant came out this way. Probably hunkered right down. Only uh, there's a train going over. The yeah, only chance we're going to have seeing the pheasant is if I happen to go right by him and spook him again. Go close enough that he's really uncomfortable and thinks he has to run. Yeah, they're super duper camouflage, the pheasants, and so he could <clears throat> totally elude me, and I think he has. He may have come over that bank flying where I saw him, and then just took off low to the ground, out further out onto the wet meadows somewhere. There's a white-tailed deer. He's in the, in the bush here. A couple of them. Let's see if I can get closer to them. It always amazes me when the deer move through the forest and they're so much quieter than me. Big animal.
Yeah, they seem to have lost them as well. Well, off to the Owlwood. Alright, here we have some late blooming Canada Goldenrod. Just gonna see who's, you know, hanging out here. It's another drone fly. This is the bee mimic that I was talking about before. And the drone fly actually is gonna winter here. I figured it out a couple of years ago that they winter inside of the old. Um, bank swallow holes at the river. That's this guy right here. And the drone fly has a, uh, will get a, uh, uh, lay his eggs in the water at the pond, and they have what's called a rat tailed maggot uh, larval stage where it's just eating dead stuff in the water. This is the sound of a train going by. Oh, here we have a bu uh, bumble. Oh, he's gone. Thought we were going to get to look at a bumblebee there. Um, but yeah, you can see there's some small little bees. Little, little, little bee on here. And then, of course, you got this fly. I don't know what kind of fly that is. And you got drone flies. So these are some of the late summer insects. Oh, here we go back again. I always tell a drone fly, well first because he's got a fly looking face, but he's got a black, and among his stripes on his back, he's got a black hourglass looking thing, and that's the drone fly for you. But you look at his face, it's absolutely a fly face, not a bee face. Although a lot of people would confuse these for bees. Right, this is the area that I refer to as the Owlwood on the south side of the, of the Ponds Levee. I call it the Owlwood because there's a family of owls um, who have been residing here over the years and sometimes nest here. In fact, right here you can see this is owl nest right there. It's, uh, so they did have a nest this year and they did have young. I haven't um, come to look around for them for a bit but I would imagine that uh, they're still around. It's, it's tough to find owl in these trees when the leaves are still on unless they're sitting on a branch where their silhouette is easily picked up but I figure it's worth a shot to come through here and see if I can get a look at any of the owls. <coughs> um, really, you know, today is really just kind of a checking in day. It's not a big learning day for me. Um, in order to learn from these places, you, you have to ask questions. And I haven't asked a, enough questions today. Um, I've asked a couple, and they weren't, they weren't uh, really um, really big questions. I mean, I just asked, are the turtles still out? Or you know, what are the insects that are still around? Who's here? You know, kind of questions. But those aren't the, the real juicy kinds of questions. So, because um, there's not a really big juicy question, not really learning a whole lot so much as just kind of like checking in and seeing what's the status of 
um, the seasonal events that typically happen here that I'm accustomed to or that I'm looking for. Right? And that's important stuff too. You know, that's that's the basic phenology study, but you can keep adding more ecological understanding if you ask more questions. I'm not seeing the owls as yet, and I could be just passing them by, but usually they kind of hang out in this corner of the forest. It's where they have some of their perches that they uh, like to use pretty often. So far I'm not seeing anybody, but I would not doubt that they're here. And I think as we get the leaves falling off the trees pretty soon, then some of the winter visits will be very easy to spot the owls. No luck. Alright, here we've got really an amazing little patch of the hairy gold nasters. Um, again, we got the drone fly right on the scene. Doing his thing at the flower. Also got what I think is called a sweat bee. Um, if I can find it here, there we are. Who's in focus? This is a real metallic-looking tiny little bee. I believe this is called a sweat bee. Um, what exact species of sweat bee it is, I'm not sure. But that's really nice to see him outside right now. Yeah, other places, other uh, out here, we still got more more drone fly activity. So, always these last little holdouts of the flowers and the last holdouts of the of the insects here to um, to feed at them and pollinate them. Pretty neat. Yeah, so I'm almost back to the vehicle, to the parking lot. I don't know if I'm going to uh, see a whole lot more um, to show for this visit. But um, one thing I did really notice, uh, different from the last visit a week ago, was that um, last visit there was a whole lot of flickers. The flicker families were still here. Um, this time, in my whole, in my uh, walk around, I just heard uh, the voice of one flicker um, at one point. That's what kind of clued me in. Um, oh yeah, there there's supposed to be a lot more flickers here, or there was last week. Now it's not surprising that they've left. Um, flickers mostly migrate out of here. You might have the oddball one, just like the kingfisher, might have the oddball um, male flicker that kind of sticks around. Uh, but but uh, it's even more odd to see that down here at the pond than to see the kingfisher hang around. Um, the flickers that do stick around mainly kind of stick around in the in the uh, in the city. Um, oh, I gotta show you this. I have been seeing some butterflies and here we have where is he here? 
Here we have one here, a white. I'm going to have to look up and remind me of his species. I have seen a couple of pink edged sulfurs as I've been walking around. And now we got this guy here, whose name I don't remember. He's on film now, so. shown he's here at this time still flying around less than a week away from the first winter moon last of the butterflies yeah so So yeah, so I think that's about it for uh, today's little stroll around. Like I was saying earlier, um, I really killed a lot of time um, talking with that guy uh, where I could have been like getting more into what's going on. But um, when somebody stops me out here and they want to know something, nature, oh, oh, here we go, here we go. Here we go, this is what I was talking about. Right here, where is he? There's the pink edge sulfur right there. It's another butterfly species I've seen today. So just those two. And just those two last lingering uh, butterflies of the season. So um, I'll probably be back out here another maybe four days or so. I want to start doing it uh, for sure on Thursdays every week because Thursdays is a good day for me to um, be out here and doing my survey, making my recordings, and then maybe one day on the weekend as well, a couple hours. Try to get Mahoney out here again with me. She hasn't been wanting to go out lately, so I've been all by my lonesome. Anyway, see you next time.